Hey, welcome back to Crafting with Cami. Today I will be scrap lifting a layout from Mel Stampin' Gallery, and she actually scrap lifted from Erin over at Crafty Concepts with Erin. So I'm scrap lifting a scrap lift. For today's layout, I'll be using the Sweet Memory Scrapbooking Workshop. Let me show you what's included in that workshop. These are picture place cards, so if you don't have your pictures printed, you can use those for your layout. We have these die cuts, and it's a thicker paperboard, so we have some flowers, swirls, a key. We have some more photo placeholders in different sizes. And then the scrapbooking workshop comes with instructions to make three double page layouts. So it tells you how to cut your papers, it tells you what embellishments you'll need, where to place them, step by step. This is the sticker sheet. Close to my heart stickers are pretty thick and I really like that. They're good quality stickers. There's a lot of titles. A Day to Remember, Sweet Memories, Picture Perfect Day, Living the Dream. And these little word stickers are super nice. Every day is a gift, looking good. Yeah, these flowers. And then it comes with these pattern papers. These are double-sided, so we have the kind of collage, we have this mulberry color floral, we have the cameras with some ledger paper. I love this cluster down in the bottom left-hand corner. We have the green with some um, smaller designs in it, and then this blue color. And then we have these punch-outs. So the, this is a thinner, this isn't as thick as the other die cuts. These are more paper, but they are a little stiffer than your regular cardstock. And then the workshop kit comes with exclusive papers. So these are just single sided. And we have this pattern here. This one has a wood grain or burlap look to it. You get two sheets of those. This is another one of those punch outs. So all of these wedges punch out of this one for one of the layouts. And then it comes with coordinating cardstock. So we have mulberry, mink, charcoal, and white daisy. Let's go ahead and clear this up and get started. These are the photos I'll be scrapbooking today. My husband and I went on a hike. The snow was starting to melt. We went kind of at sunset. It was a beautiful day. I'm thinking I want my photos in this orientation, so I'm testing it out on kind of that wood grain pattern, and then I brought in this blue, but I'm not liking that. It's, it's a little more purple than the sky, so it just kind of clashes. Let's go ahead and bring in that ledger paper. I know I want that on the left-hand side. I did add some archival black ink on the side of it there. You can see on the edge. And I actually decided to go with this green color, and I cut that circle from my Cricut machine. I'm wanting the photos in this orientation. To determine exactly where I want my photos, I'm going to bring in my title. And I cut this on my Cricut as well. I did a print and cut. So when you select the print and cut feature on the Cricut, it prints it out through your regular printer first, and then it has you run it through the Cricut to actually cut out the letters. So my title reads, Thank God My Someone's You. That is from a song written by Aaron Lewis. If you're not familiar with that song, go check it out. <laughs> for the stenciling, I'm going to bring in the Sprigs and Leaves stencil. This came in a kit with stamps, die cuts, embossing folders. Um, so it has one layer for the leaves and then one for the veins of the leaves. I'm not sure if I'll put the veins in. The ledger paper is about five and a half inches wide, so I'm going to fill in from five and a half over to 12 with the stencils. Just moving these out of my way, and then I'm going to bring the stencil in, and I want it to kind of go off of the edge of the page, so I don't want any harsh lines. I'm bringing in the mink ink, which is a coordinating color with this paper pack. And I'm bringing in one of my blending brushes. You can get these on the Close to My Heart website, so I'll have those linked below. These are super nice and soft bristled, so you can determine how dark your blending is by the amount of pressure you put on it. I just tapped off a little bit of the ink so I don't get that harsh line um, when I first start. And then I'm just lightly blending. I'm using a really soft hand. You can always add more. And then I'm just making sure to go up under where that circle is. I will be adding some washi tape here. 
my stencil started moving on me so luckily it's easy enough to line up and then I'm just going to tack it down so that stops shifting tap off any excess and then just lightly brushing it on I'm using a circular motion and then I'm just lifting it up a little bit here to see how dark it's getting sometimes it's hard to tell just how dark it um, is going on and then I'm liking how that is looking so I'm just shifting that over bringing up that washi tape I do like using the washi tape it's a good adhesive but it's not too terribly strong and then I even stick it onto my pants or my shirt first um, to get rid of some of that sticky then it doesn't risk ripping your paper when you pull it back up I'm just adding a few leaves over in this area to fill in the white space and then again going up under that circle so it looks continuous and then having some of the leaves go off the bottom of the page as well and I am liking how that's looking I like the mink with that green and it brings out the mink in the ledger paper as well I have some room down in this bottom right corner so I'm just kind of lining up the leaves I don't want them to run into any other leaves I want some hanging off the page so just kind of lining that up a little bit here and I'll go ahead and tack it down with my washi tape again and then just lightly brushing it on in that circular motion let's go ahead and move the stencil up to the top upper right hand side and again I'm just lining it up so that the leaves aren't running into any other leaves I want some of them going under the circle some of them hanging off the page and then we'll bring in that mink ink again just tapping off a little bit so that we don't have those dark splotches on there I don't do enough stenciling I do enjoy it I like the look of it I like to get a little messy in the craft room but I don't have a huge collection of stencils so it just doesn't get added to my layouts very often I'll need to add to my collection so I can do more stenciling but I do appreciate that Mel included this on her layout so by scrap lifting her it kind of forced me to get out those stencils and and do something that I don't normally do on a lot of my layouts I'm loving the background stenciling let's put away that mink ink I'm bringing my archival back oh my goodness archival black ink back in <laughs> and I'm just going to ink around the edges of the whole layout and I'm going direct pad to paper so it'll add a little thicker black line and um, in some areas areas it may actually go onto the page making it look a little more distressed this should help bring your eye to the center of the layout as well and it helps the edge be a little more defined all right let's get this lined back up on our versa mat make sure my stenciling's on the right side here i like to tack that down on the versa mat a little bit so that it doesn't move on me let's bring those other papers back in I'm loving how this is coming together I am going to use that archival black ink and go around this green pattern paper I have the black around everywhere else and it just kind of defines it and helps it to stick out from that background paper the ledger paper will be behind the circle as well so this will help it stand out against that and there we are let's go ahead and put the archival black ink away before I stick my arm in that and then we'll bring in the pictures and the title again just to make sure everything's lining up okay when I was creating this on the Cricut I kind of wanted my the thank god my to be at a not completely centered more off to the left going around the circle and then I made someone's you completely straight I considered having the someone you go around the bottom part of the circle but I do like how it's straight and it's giving those horizontal pictures a ledge to rest on it kind of stops those photos from continuing on through the bottom of the page let's go ahead and get these embellishments out I'm going to start with the thicker die cuts I know I want to use these swirls so we're going to start with those I also like to start with the larger embellishments first and then start bringing in the smaller ones so I'm going to start with the swirls and go from there 
So I'm wanting that more off to the right. I know I want my clusters to kind of play off of what Mel had. I really liked her swirls going um, around the bottom. So I know I want to bring those in. And then I love these floral pieces too. And I am going to incorporate quite a few of the florals from this collection. I think it goes nicely with the title and these are outdoor photos. I am playing around with that bottom title. I tried moving it over to the left. I don't mind the swirls coming out from either side of that someone's view, but I really did like it under the horizontal photos. I have a big open spot under the top title, so I'm thinking of including an embellishment cluster there as well. This heart is pretty cool. It's solid on one half and then it has the swirls on the other half. Let's just go ahead and pop all of these out and then I can play with all of them. I might want to bring in some of those hearts or the key. I've gotten everything punched out. I might bring in some of those smaller hearts as well. It does take me a little bit to figure out where I want my embellishments. The swirls were more difficult than I thought they would be. I know I'm wanting a cluster in the top of the circle in that open area. Let's go ahead and bring in my other die cuts. These are more of a cardstock paper material, so they are quite a bit thinner than what I've already been playing with. I'm going to punch out the flowers. I know I want to include that green one, the pink ones. There's this like doily flower in this, I want to say mist color. So now I have a few more to play with. And then I'm also going to take a look at the sticker sheet and see what's on there. I thought this little tab might look good up in this corner and that is also from that paper sheet. I want to add layers and I want to make sure I have all of the colors in each cluster. So there's already, I'm counting that pre-printed cluster on the bottom left as one. So there's already a pink flower there, so I want to bring the pink flower up top. Let's take a look at the sticker sheet and see what's on there for flowers. There's another big pink one. There's a blue one. There's this every day is, um, yeah, every day is a gift is what that green one says. And isn't that true? <laughs> and every day with my husband is a gift. Let's go ahead and pull that one off. I am removing the adhesive from all of the stickers so I can play around with them. There's this open box down in this cluster, so I'm thinking that every day would go nicely there. And then I'm playing around with that blue flower, but I don't want it to cover that camera. I really like that camera down in the cluster. We'll find a different home for that flower. So let's go ahead and play around with the other clusters and the swirls some more. I do feel that the swirls need to be coming out from a cluster, so I'm moving that upper cluster down to the bottom right. And off camera, I do play around with this quite a bit more. Here is the finished product. I brought in some more of the stickers of the little pink hearts. I popped up some of the embellishments on foam tape so that blue one's lifted. I kept the swirls over to that bottom left. And then here is the other embellishment cluster. I popped up that pink one and included one of those pink hearts. My stenciling turned out great. And then the bottom right corner, I kept it pretty simple with some layers and a pink heart. I'm happy with how this layout turned out. It's one of those that I had in my head for quite a while, but I wasn't sure how it was going to come together. And then after I saw Mel's video, I was inspired to bounce off of her ideas. I will have her video in the description box down below, so be sure to go check hers out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so and hit that notification bell. And until next time, live a life worth scrapping. Bye, guys.